and award shows where their hearts in their right place are, are really important. We do a fade out because we weren't sure where we were supposed to go from there. Their families were underneath the, the tropical palms having picnics while we were setting up. She was like, it's very pretty, but what's it for? And I was like, it's for art. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Unsigned Berlin. We recently got the incredible chance to sit down with Krungbin following the press blackout that they did around the new album A La Sala. We talk about their new music video, A Love International, which is for one of the songs on the album. And in the interview, you'll see me talk with Laura Lee, who's the bassist and sort of the front person of the band and the director of the video, Scott Dungate, who's also done a couple other videos with Krungbin, including the one for Two Fish and an Elephant a few years ago. This interview was set up in collaboration with the Berlin Music Video Awards because the video was nominated for the category of Best Narrative um, at the awards. So thank you very much to everyone at the team there. Come say hi at the Fall Festival from the 12th to the 14th of June. And thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoy it. And let's get right into it. Um, I think in general, at least from my perspective, a lot of opinions have shifted about what award shows mean for the industry in general. So for you guys, both of you separately, what significance do you think award shows like the Berlin Music Video Awards hold for people like yourself, directors and artists, et cetera? Um, I think, I think award shows that, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and award shows where their hearts in their right place are, are really important for the industry. And, uh, I think, um, uh, award shows that uh, really help uh, boost up, you know, up and coming talent and, you know, allow um, space to be kind of uh, spotted. And that sort of thing is, is really important. I come from a advertising background where I think a lot of the time uh, award shows can actually lead to work that's great purely for award shows. And I think that's a bit different with music videos where it's usually created to reflect the band or it's uh created to speak to the, the band's fans or just a reaction to the song itself and i think there's something that i i enjoy about that sort of feels a bit more pure than what can kind of sometimes be a bit more um made just to win awards uh in kind of um advertising circles laura do you see that reflected in music in the same way or is do you feel it's very different you know, I think uh, I, I find it difficult sometimes to, like, judge creativity, um, but I, I like honoring it. And I think with music videos in particular, it's a sort of art form that has become more associated with content than it has about kind of really appreciating the kind of original intention and nature of them. So I'm very, I'm happy that it exists. <laughs> How do you think yourself and the band view music videos? Is it a promotional tool or a creative extension of what you're trying to say? It's definitely a creative extension. Um, I remember early on one of our first music videos, my, my aunt Margaret called me and she was like, it's very pretty, but what's it for? And I was like, it's for art. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's why, you know. For for you, Scott, this is, well, for both of you, actually, your second nomination for the Berlin Music Video Awards, both, and hopefully second win, but uh, one win and one nomination, definitely, both in the best narrative category. Do you feel that narrative is sort of the cornerstone of what you do as a director, or are you looking to... Um, explore other maybe more abstract sides of video creation uh i i think i like narrative but it's also a reaction to uh Rungen's music because uh i've always found that uh uh the new feels like a film score in my head uh, a lot of the tracks that i listen to so i kind of like the challenge of trying to put a story that has the right chapters and stuff that matches the shape of the song. And I, I just really enjoy that. Um, so I think that's why I also think like I'm, you know, there are a lot of other directors that can do kind of visually stunning stuff. And I think I'm, I'm stronger on the, the, uh, storytelling side maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, yeah, I just enjoy that, that sort of challenge and also having 
you know, emotional things in the stories for, for me and trying to do that in, you know, four and a half minutes or something is, is also fun. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of credit should be given to Scott because we give him no narrative to work with. Right. Do you give visuals or anything? I know you studied um, art history, so I guess you probably have some some right. visual inspiration in you um, before you bring the work to Scott. Usually, it's pretty raw. Um, we we don't give him too much because we kind of want him to go where his mind takes him. But I know in this particular instance, like he came back with some original takes on it, and then one thing that the band kind of came back with was that we wanted something that was shot on the water. Um, like it felt like, it felt like water, The like it felt like the ocean. So um, that was the only piece I think that we gave him. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I really value the freedom that uh, Laura, uh, the guys like, Give me this one have a first pass at it just to react purely to the song and uh um and then after that we usually can usually come back with i don't know like five or eight ideas or something um and just have a discussion about them and then from that uh usually what comes up is there'll be something that you know the band feels that they really want in the in the realm of, or there might be something that uh, we get something and then sort of do a second riff off the back of that to create what will be more the final kind of thing. Um, and obviously that's weighed against, you know, what you can do for budget and all that, those sort of things. Um, you know, trying to work out how you kind of make it look as you know, as possible. I'd be curious to know about the songwriting for this song and its relationship with the song Tai, You and I, which was on Mordecai. As I understand it, time was largely inspired by a love international the festival in Croatia, which is obviously an inspiration that's carried through to at least the name of this song. Um, is there a connection between those songs at all? No, there's not at all, actually. Um, and, and in terms of the festival, it was more, I think it's like the spirit. Um, it was, it was a festival that is run by some friends of mine that we've spent a lot of time at and it sort of feels like home and uh in a, in a friendship sort of way and then and the other part of the festival is the location because it's set in a beautiful part of croatia and so i think that was that was part of the the landscape in so right um but yeah no uh maybe energetically there's a relationship between the two but not not from the actual songwriting perspective. Um, it's interesting that, like, the song development that happens in the studio, it's like, um, it's like a, they're like beings of their own that kind of take shape. And that particular song, DJ initially wrote the demo for it. He wrote my bass, like a bass line. It's not exactly what I play. It was actually a real challenge for me to take what he did and turn it into my own baseline um because he writes sort of with me in mind um but yeah he wrote like a baseline and then chord and then it kind of like over the course of a week really kind of turned into what it is and we love it so much but it was like a real journey kind of from from the demo version to what it is now interesting how did you choose which songs are going to become a music video This one just sounded like Scott Groundgate to me. Um, and I knew that I wanted to work with Scott again. And it felt cinematic in the way that I think of him. Um, yeah, I, I don't... It's like, sure, the song that how music videos are the singles, so to speak. Um but it's not a likely candidate to be a single. <laughs> it was like I had a vision of it being a music video told through Scott's lens and that being the sort of beginning announcement of the album. Right. Yeah, it just felt like a 
I don't know. That's just like, it felt right in my heart. Nice. I would love to know about the casting process because the cinematography is, is really great and the curation of all of the costumes and everything is, is really beautiful, but the kids are such an important part of the video. How did you go about casting? Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's sort of hinged on the kids and we really sweated the casting because we only had one day to shoot that and there's a lot of stuff. We're shooting kids on a pontoon. We're at, at the beach, which sounds nice, but it's really hot and kids get tired and stuff. Um, so we spent, I probably did about maybe three or four casting recalls, um, just trying to track down the, the most interesting kids. I knew I'd find them in Thailand because you kind of want a, a mixture of them being quite cheeky but still kind of sweet. They're not like, um, you know, nice kids, but still, you know, they've got this sort of um, cheekiness to them. So uh, we we spent a lot of time passing a lot of callbacks and, um, yeah, we got our little Motley crew mm. uh, together. And, and yeah, and they, they were they were awesome. They had su- it was such a nice shoot. Everyone, their families were underneath the, the tropical palms having picnics while we were setting up the next shots and stuff like that. It had a really good vibe and you could feel that, I think, in the footage. And we, like I said, we only had one day, so there wasn't a lot of extra takes for their performances and stuff. How much of it was, was it entirely in camera? Um, because there's a shot where the camera's panic, like, is going across the, the beach and it has all the influences in the foreground. Yeah. In the background, there's the kid on the, on the tube. Um, was that in camera and just timed really, really well? Yeah, the, the, no, <laughs> it's the short answer. Most of it is in camera, but we had to get the timing of the um, the banana boat uh, running in the background, and that um, that proved uh, quite tricky and stuff. So we, I think we ended up putting that, putting most of that in post. It might have been in one shot. We were kind of trying our luck a bit on things because uh, we didn't have a lot of time. Um, so we're like, oh, let's let's try and get it running through a few times. But I think I think we posted it in from memory. Um, there are a few bodies that we put in in post as well, but the foreground was was kind of all there. And uh, but that was kind of a you know a tricky thing to map out really far <laughs> on the day, you know, just sort of get the choreography and stuff kind of mapped out. And we that's why I was saying that with the rehearsals, we sort of tried to use that time and the callbacks to rehearse a lot as well. So, you know, I had a swimming pool at the rehearsals to get some of the action in the water as well. Um, so we weren't working that out on the day. Uh, but yeah, it was, it all, it all sort of hang together and our, you know, our post partners kind of did the rest of pulling it all together. As I understand it, the album, a lot of the idea behind the album is stripping down the instrumental part and making it sort of a do less with do more with less even um approach was that very much in the mindset going into the video as well no uh, so. <laughs> yeah, we're doing more with this <laughs> no we had a yeah, to be fair no we had a very good music video budget it was more like we just had high ambitions to do extra stuff so a lot of you know there are a lot as always a lot of people um you know really getting behind it like and it's been you know same kind of crude of people uh in post production as well and then you know finding really good local production partner uh with tap prod uh really helped and you know these things are pulled together with love and love and care and uh favors these sort of things so um no it's it's always good but we always try and uh you know it's it's kind of fun with with the restrictions that happen. You you have to work out smart ways to get around them. And most of the time, it makes the work better. So, Could you give an uh, example of that for this video? Well, I'll give you an example. Like, for example, the intro. We you know that was an idea. Um, obviously, probably means flying machine, doesn't it? Or, or you know, which means playing in Thai. Yeah. Uh, flying engine. Yeah. So we want to. I thought, oh, we're shooting in Thailand. We have to have an opening, which or have plane in it somewhere. So, you know, obviously I look, I went all over Thailand looking at plane because we only had one day. So I found a plane cafe, 30 kilometers and we were going to do that, but it ended up being again, like it was too, it cost us too much time traveling there, even a 20 minute journey. So 
we ended up finding a plane park and, yeah. and sort of doing it. But all that sort of, you know, that trying stuff, not dismissing stuff, keeping it on the table, but seeing if you can get it. And then it sort of happens. And even when we shot, I said, you know, I said to um, Laura that we might might not be able to get this shot, even though we had it because of the time uh, that we had, that we'd run out. So, um, you know, but we did. So we, we got the intro and the outro. So, um, yeah. So there's, uh, you know, just that's things like that, which you have to have to see staying in the lot. Yeah. Thinking of the approach of doing more with less, Laura, you talked about in previous interviews, viewing creativity as an exercise in playfulness, which to me, playfulness is sort of like defined by not having boundaries so much. So it's a little bit of like a interesting situation to be in of focusing on playfulness, but then trying to put it within the boundaries of relative minimalism. How did you feel working on this album with that mindset? I mean, I, I think that it's interesting that you say that because actually there's so much playfulness within boundaries. Like if you were to draw a circle on the ground and say like play inside the circle, it's like there's so much to actually explore in there that you actually might find creative, playful corners that you wouldn't find if you didn't give yourself any kind of limitation. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, there was there's an exercise in simplicity in the sense that we we went back to kind of just bass, guitar, and drums. Um, and there are, you know, there are synths that we are playing, you know, very minimally, but we even stripped back the effect um, that we're used, especially with where Mark is concerned, which means that there's actually more freedom for him to explore what he can, what he can actually make with just his string. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, it's like by creating a limitation, you realize how much room there is. Absolutely. Can you think of an example on the album of maybe a moment that you're really proud to have, have reached that was maybe influenced by that? Um, well, actually I'll talk about this song because we, you know, at the end of the song, we, we, we do a fade out because we weren't sure where we were supposed to go from there. Um, and it kind of continues to modulate and it sort of fades out with this sort of the sentiment that the song kind of keeps playing forever and keeps modulating and keeps getting bigger and you don't really know where it ends. Um, but in real life, because we are playing the song live, we had to end we had to end it. Right. And um it became a real, I mean, we spent days in rehearsal figuring out how to end this song and still have it feel as epic as the recording does, um, but ending. And and so we ended up, uh, at the end, we kind of, we modulate one more time and then we go into a waltz. And it's sort of like, what can you do with just three people on stage to make it, to make a change that's still just as impactful as like continuing to go on and on. And it was like changing the timing. And so it's sort of like, we're, we're not adding anything. We're not doing any crazy tricks. We're just playing our instruments, but it's still creating that real, um, you know. Nice. Is that kind of reflected in the, the video as well in terms of it growing and growing and growing and then has to finish, but then like it's a different yeah. thing to do with yeah it is yeah i think like with the shape of the the story and that we were it, it was a simple story and that was kind of the the one that laura and um the guys like decided on they wanted the this it's a simple love story but what i wanted beats where you weren't sure what was going to happen in the story so you know the kiss scene hopefully comes out of nowhere a little bit the um, you know, the guys on the pontoon, it's sort of just a weird thing for them to start flexing and sort of, you know, so all of that sort of stuff, the chase scene at the beginning and then the banana boat, all that sort of stuff, but just little hooks of kind of it, just the story of someone picking up mango sticky rice for the, you know, their girlfriend. It's kind of more than that. Um, and yeah, the, the ending, I think we, we had the ambiguity of like, was it a dream? Was it not a dream? You know, there's sort of, 
there's deliberate things there, but we decided to kind of leave it as a as as open that it could be a dream or it could or maybe it, you know. A couple we're really short on time. We have three minutes left, so a couple really quick questions. One for Laura. I understand that you learned bass playing along with the Scientist Wins the World Cup um, album. Is there a album, it could be a Krungman album or anything that you would recommend to beginner bassists if they wanted to do a similar approach? I mean, honestly, Scientist Wins the World Cup is a great ABC record. All Pretty much all of Scientist records because um, it's the Roots Radix. I mean, there's like a Scottalites Roots Radix record that's also lovely. But yeah, I think dub records are perfect because they're really slow but really intentional and the length of each note is so important Mm -hmm. but but the the bass lines are simple enough that beginner hand can figure out great and then last question uh for scott what advice would you give to artists who are looking to collaborate with directors or filmmakers so they can bring their music to life visually first of all i I do limited amount of music videos so Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just curving uh, the house, but I think like uh, letting the the artists have a bit of freedom with it first, so that have a reaction. To the music's kind of important um, because you never know what might happen with that. Um, it's new stimuli. It's sort of you know, uh, I think you can really unlock something rather than being too too prescriptive. But equally, if you've got one thing that you really want to put in there, like maybe put that in or ask about that in the second meeting yeah. so they can work out, you know, how that might fit sort of part of the joy of making music, you know, fit to fit yeah. your... Great. Well, thank you very much to both of you for making the time to talk to us at um, Berlin Music Video Awards and Unsigned Berlin. Uh, oh, just thank you for me. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's uh, lovely questions as well. I really enjoyed it there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you awesome. have a lovely day. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Bye. Right. Bye.